Hi, I'm the Morelander and this is Morelander EDC. Now you may have noticed that Casio recently released their new Mudman model. Now Mudmen are different from Mudmasters. This is the GW9500. I was going to say 95,000 then, but it's not. It's the 9500, isn't it? Uh, I thought I'd pick one of these up. I've had this now for a few days. I've been wearing it out and about. And I think I've got a good enough opinion on whether I like this or not. So to help you to decide, let's look at this a little bit closer. Okay, so here we have it. Um, what we'll do is we'll go through some measurements, we'll have a look around the watch, and then we'll have a look at some of the features of the watch itself. Now as far as your measurements are concerned, this is actually a little bit wider than it is taller. It comes in at 56.7 millimeters by 52.7 millimeters and it is 14.8 millimeters deep. Um, as far as watch faces are concerned, I guess compared to other um, models that are out there, hopefully you can see here compared to the original, or at least the, the Mudman that I had, the first one that I had, the face is definitely a lot larger. It's got more of a kind of a brutal look to it. And, and I, I, I mean that in the sense that you've got these kind of, you've got these trunnions that are coming out from the side. Uh, the buttons definitely have a more militaristic kind of inspired look and feel to them. Um, I, I really did like this color, mainly because of one of my favorite Transformers growing up was green and, uh, and, green and yellow, so I had to go for this. Um, but I've done this in this lighting specifically so that we get the best look at this at the at the display on here. Um, as far as construction is concerned, so the inner module, or at least I suppose the outer shell for the inner module, is is part of one of their carbon core models, which is great. It helps to reduce the weight. Um, you can see it from the back here. This black part on the uh, on the inside here. This is the this is the carbon core, apart from this green bit there, uh, and then on the outside, Casio have renamed this. They're now calling it Bio Based Resin, mainly because people are going, oh, too many plastics. Um, so bio based resin is less offensive to snowflakes. Um, but yes, it's now bio based resin. On the back, you have a stainless steel back. Now I will open this up mainly because I think what's important to show is on here we have uh, we have the mole on there. So the original, or at least the one that I have here, this had the mole on the back as well. Uh, this is how you know it is one of the mud men or Mudman watches. The module on here, just in case you're wondering, it is the 3553, it's classed as the GW9500. It is water resistant to 20 bars, 200 meters. Um, as part of Casio's G-Shock line, all of their watches uh, need to be able to be dropped from a certain height. They need to have a battery that lasts 10 years. Uh, and they also need to be water resistant down to 200 meters. And this one, and I will read this right this time. <coughs> I know in previous ones, I don't know why I read Taiwan, but it is Thailand. And this is made in Thailand. Um, strap wise, I do like the strap on this. I have had some issues in previous years uh, of the lack of just, I don't know, just interest in uh, Casio straps, but this strap, similar to this one here, and also on the on the on the G9000, it's actually got a little bit of character um, to it. It's got a bit more presence on your wrist. So uh, as far as uh, the, the, the clasp is concerned, it is a metal clasp and you, it is a double tang. So you've got double tang holes all the way through here. I find for my wrist uh, that it fits just right as well. Um, they, they have spaced them reasonably close. Now I think that they can do that mainly because with, with the double tang, it just gives you an extra little bit more grip so that it, they can use less, uh, less what do they call it, bio resin in here. Uh, but they've also continued, so all of the holes that go through uh, through this side also go up through here as well. So it just it just continues that look around the watch. The, uh, the, the, the stay that you have on here is plastic, but even in itself, if you look, it's got a nice little, it says G-Shock on there. They've put a little bit more thought into it. Now it doesn't have a little tooth in there, so 
Um, but then saying that, so when I've got this on my wrist, I probably still have enough that I can get it in there. Um, but it, it doesn't particularly move around a lot. I don't know whether it's because this is texturized. If it is, then, I mean, that is great because it does a very good job of keeping it there, but it doesn't have a, a, a tooth in there so that it, it fits into one of those slots and doesn't move. But this is Casio getting back to making nice watch straps. I know I talk way too much about watch straps, but some of the straps that they've made have just been dull as dishwater. Uh, on the top here, it says triple sensor because this is an ABC watch. ABC stands for altimeter, barometer, and compass. Uh, then on the bottom here, it says mud resist, and then we've also got tough solar and multiband six. So. As far as keeping your time uh, as up to date as possible, the multiband six, the six locations across the world, generally they are in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, so yeah, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, you just gotta keep updating your time yourself. Uh, but from what I understand, I think they're gonna be scrapping multiband six soon now anyway, because a lot of these watches do connect via Bluetooth to your watch, so you can keep them up to date. This one doesn't, it doesn't have that feature, so as far as keeping your uh, battery for as long as possible, it's not something that, that's just gonna be wearing down your battery and just annoying you because it's not a feature that you don't use. So that that's great in my eyes. Um, Tough sole on here, so there is, uh, the, within the glass and around the outside, so it does have um, solar receptors in there to help to charge. Now, it doesn't necessarily just have to be the sun. So here I have this little LED light here that I'm using uh, for this, uh, but that will continue to charge the battery on this. So it doesn't, it, it, it's any type of light will help to recharge this. And then on the inside, where is it again? So on the inside here at the bottom, you have um, you register on how much battery that you have left. So at the moment it's H for high, you have M and then L for low. There is a, a time saver on this that you can turn on and off. So if I did take this off, put it in my watch drawer, leave it there for a few days, um, I'd get back to it and find that the display will have turned off. Um, it turns off some of the features so that it will help to keep some of that battery for as long as possible. But uh, what I've found with these is generally they really do keep their um, charge for, for, for quite a long time. Now, as far as the face is concerned in here, so this is the negative display versions. There are three versions of this. Only one, which really, really surprises me, only one of them has a positive display. So, you might pick up a little bit of frustration here. I picked this up mainly because I like the green and, and, and yellow accents. I will say this is very hard to read even during the day. Now I've got this and I've put this little LED here purposely at this angle so that you can see this screen uh, and, and how nice it looks. If we zoom in a little bit further as well, okay. Yeah, you really can see how nice that looks. However, you move it for any angle it's, it's just so hard to see. If you're planning on telling the time with this in the dark, you, ha the, you, you just have to, you have to use the light. There's no two ways around it. Um, it's got a very strange angle on it as well. So the angle that you lift it up to read the time seems the hardest. So naturally I lift my watch up, I can see the time and then I can tell the time. That angle seems the hardest to actually view this at. You almost have to, I mean, oh, you can't do it at this because of the little light that's there, but you almost have to lift it up, turn it ever so slightly, and then move it forward to be able to catch the light. The display is sunken in there quite a bit because there's a few things in around this display that means that it is sunken a little bit more than I feel than some other Casio watches. Firstly being that you've got all of this kind of furniture around the outside which means that you know you're restricting some light that comes in. Around the outside you then also have this additional information as far as your sensors and that sort of thing. 
again that restricts some of the light coming in but this also has a dual display so on the inside hopefully you'll be able to see there that you've got the date and time uh, so you've got the date time and then you've got the seconds here at the bottom but the compass feature so if I put the compass on now the compass is actually a second display that is overlaid on, uh, on top of the first display which again does limit some of the light getting through there not a massive amount but just enough to make it it's just difficult to read which I'm really really bummed about but well it's not really a but is it at the end of the day you have a watch so that you can read the time and if it's tricky to read your time it just seems strange that they only did one version with a positive display the display on this is huge though. I really do like the large display. If you're looking at the positive display, you'll be able to read this very easy. For people that struggle um, or have difficulties uh, reading smaller displays like this one, um, this one will be you know, really good for you if you make sure you pick up the positive display. I've, I've rattled on about the display way too much. So let's get into some of the features now. <clears throat> The actual modes themselves, so your modes operated by the button down here at 7 o'clock. So the first one is that you can see the sunrise and sunset. Now as part of setting it up, which we'll have a look at in here, um, you choose where you are um, as far as, your, as, as, as the city that you're in. So that's how it works out where, when your sunrise and sunset will be. Uh, you then have your records so if you've done any walking and you've I don't know you've climbed up a hill you've climbed down a hill um, all of that sort of thing you can that you can then go through some of this information um, you know where you've been where you started off where you got to all of that sort of information if you you know if that's the sort of thing that you want to, to check now as I'm going through this you pro if, if you're a watch nerd you'll be looking at this and thinking hmm that's weird a lot of these features are very similar to the range man or a lot of these features are also on quite a lot of the pro trek watches and you would be right they are this is a 350 pounds watch some of those others are roughly half the price you know something that you need to think about so back to the modes, uh, so that is, uh, so that's, what did they call it? I forgot what they call it then. Um, but that's that's your kind of record of what you've been doing for that day. Then you've got your stopwatch, so start, stop, reset, but you can also start it. Let's hit the reset for now, and then you'll be able to see that there is a split time on there. If I hit this again, you'll see that that jumps forward, stop, reset, which is great. Some watches just don't simply have that, which seems daft. Um, but as well, hopefully, while I'm going through these, also look at this bottom panel here. So just to make sure if you are in the stopwatch mode or if you're in the countdown timer mode, you'll see that it also keeps your current time here at the bottom as well, which I think, again, is, is nice in, in this large display. Uh, next we have the timer so it's uh, as standard it comes in at um, it comes in what does it come in at? it comes in at 10 minutes um, so you can change those using the uh, using the adjust button up here then we have alarms so you have five independent alarms you can all set them individually and then there is a, um, a, a, a an hourly time signal which I always turn on after that we have world times, so at the moment it's set for Madrid, so I know in Madrid at this moment in time it's in roughly an hour, well it is exactly an hour ahead of me. So there is the Madrid time and here is the UK time because we're still on British summer time. Uh, then you've got your received, so depending on your, um, the, the, it says it here on the side, the, the multiband six. Uh, so these this is the information that's coming through to your watch so it can then decide you know what time it needs to be so they're all of your normal main functions on the right hand side here that you then this is where your ABC comes in and it goes altimeter barometer and compass so your altimeter now you can reset this so at this moment in time it thinks that I am where does it say it thinks that I'm 200 and 264 feet above ground level around sea level which I'd, I'd certainly know that I'm not so but you can you can change that um, if, if you are on any of these modes and you want to get back you can press the mode button and it will get you back to there and when you're in these um, if you if you press the mode again really it just kind of readjusts and, and, and rechecks what you've got next one is the barometer so on the barometer here again it will give you information around um, the 
barometrics for your area whether the pressure is increasing or not uh, useful if you're into this sort of stuff and you can kind of pick up on um, those changes uh, especially for things like rain um, what was the watch that I had? The Sunto Core has a rain alarm on there, which has saved my, I say saved my life. It's saved me from getting wet quite a few times. The last one at the top is the compass. So this is the digital compass and this has this overlay over your normal screen. Um, at this moment in time, I'd say that this is pretty much, I know that the room that I'm in, I know that my house faces in an easterly direction. Um, so yeah, I'd say that this is, this is uh, again, this is pretty accurate. But any of these, if you do need to readjust these, so maybe something like uh, where, where your, your altimeter, then you can adjust that once you're in that mode. So when, when you're in here, you keep your, tie, your finger down on the adjust there or if you keep your finger down on it and that will allow you to. So if you know that you are at a certain point where you know that there is a definite marking, maybe there's a trig point, something like that, you know you are at X altitude, you can reset that and then it will adjust everything from your altitude from the position that you definitely know that you're at. Now as far as adjustments are concerned, so you press your finger down on the top button here and then this will allow you to allow you to set these. So the first one that it comes in is, the, is your actual location. Mine's set as London. What this will do is it will make sure that my local time is correct, but it will also check on all of the um, all of the sunrise and sun sunrise and sunset settings as well. You can then cycle through these using the mode button. So next one is daylight savings time. I have it set to auto, but whether it's daylight savings or whether it's British summer time, you can swap those around, and that will you know it'll either add or take away an hour. Next one is format. Now, being an adult, I keep mine in a 24-hour format. Um, obviously, if you're going to hand this to a child, that they need to be in a 12-hour format, then that's great. You can quickly uh, you can quickly swap that around. Then you go through the actual changings of the times. If you did want to manually adjust some of this yourself, so you've got seconds, then you've got your hours, then you've got your minutes, then you can come on to the year. And then you can change the date on here again. So at the moment it's in July uh, and 31st because that's when this was recorded. Next up is your key options. So at the moment these aren't turned on, but if you wanted to uh, for key presses, you can you can add an actual uh, 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 something that you know makes a beep when you press the button. Then you've got your light, so at the moment it's just set for one second, but I believe is it yeah, it's one or three seconds if you want to do that. We'll have a look at the light as well in a second. Uh, then you're on to the power saving mode. So at this moment in time, I do have this turned on, and that would mean, as I mentioned, you know, if I leave this, put it in my drawer, come back to it in a few days' time, it will have turned off some of the functions on there. It'll just keep the time saving information click. Uh, moving on in the background that will save your battery uh, which is great I, I don't see why anybody would turn it off I guess uh, and then after that you get onto the units I think this is the last one so I live in a metric country and we're on yes we are we're on well, yeah we're on meters um, and then you get all the way around back around and then you're on to the city Oh, that's you can change. You, you can change. That's how you can recalibrate your compass as well. If if you want to recalibrate your compass, really nice features. Now, I, I, yeah, I'm, I did mention this, but some of these features are on other Casio Pro Trek watches that are half the price of this. I think it is a very nice feature set that they have in here. I think they've added. A wee premium onto this mainly because it's a G-Shock and it is a, it's a Mudmaster. Now I did want to compare this. I'll bring this into my original. So this this is what got me into the Mudmasters. This is the G9000, my very first Mud. Sorry, I keep saying Mudmaster. I meant Mudman. This is my very first Mudman, and I genuinely do love this watch. It's possibly one of the best keeping time Casios that I have. You'll be able to see that this shies in comparison to the size of the uh, of the of the 9500 and um, putting them like that as well you can see that the 9500 is definitely a lot thicker as well um, although this has a larger display the 9000 is infinitesimally easier to read 
Now the one little bit that we haven't touched on, let's see if I can turn this light off, where did my off go? So let's turn this off and then here is the light. So let's bring this in. Oh, let's make sure we're in focus. The light on this is great. It really is a good light, but you will find that you will be using this an awful lot because trying to read this in the dark is it's just incredibly difficult it really really is difficult to be able to read in the dark so you will be using your light quite a bit now as a wrist check because i know people do like to see it on my wrist i have a seven and a half inch wrist uh, i've got four uh four holes left i can still get that in there there's still plenty of room it, i've in, in the three or four days that i've owned this it hasn't come out um, my wrists are quite warm at this moment in time, so I do find that they do swell quite a bit. If you're like me, you might find that you're adjusting it quite a bit through the day, but it sits on there, it feels really nice. You do get a bit of a push in there, especially when I have it, uh, have it on its tightest. Um, but as I mentioned, you know, I, my wrists are quite warm today, so I'm just going to push that back out so that doesn't push in as much but these kind of protruding buttresses here they do stick in just a little bit this one on this side so this is actually the sensor for all of the ABC functions that are on here um, that's not so bad but I think on the wrist it does look really nice I think it would be fair to say that I'm almost slightly torn on this watch my original um, G9000 was probably half the price of this. Yes, it didn't have a lot of the features that this had, but when you look at Casio's other lineups, there's some Pro Trek watches that have pretty much got a carbon copy of the features that are on here that are still, again, half the price. I think as far as the looks, it has that kind of bombastic, just presence on your wrist it's a large watch and it feels like a large watch and I think it looks great the green and uh, the green and yellow highlights on this remind me of our favorite transformer from back in the days and this is what really attracted me to it whether I can get past how hard it is to view the display at certain angles or it's, it's, it's just not viewable in the dark I wish the perfect balance for this model would have been for it to have a positive display. But hopefully, I mean, the aim of this is, for, for, is to give you guys a little bit more understanding on whether or not you want to pick this up. It's definitely an unbiased kind of review and yeah, so what are your thoughts? Are you going to be picking one of these up? Now I'll leave some links below so that you can see more from this watch, more from Casio and G-Shock. They may be affiliate links, it just helps me to... Um, well, it just helps me to buy 350 pound watches like this so that I can, you know, build the channel. Um, but yes, I'll leave some of those links below and I'll also leave some of my social media links here on Morelander EDC and my other channel, Morelander Tactical. But for now, as always, stay safe, stay Morelander, stay EDC. Mud 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 it is a gorgeous watch. That display is so hard to read. Cause I'm a mud man. Do, 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 do. Yeah, mud man. I forgot I was recording that for a second. I hope you're all having a good day. It's Monday. I don't usually post on a Monday. But I'm off this week with Mrs. Morlander and the Morlandies daughters. So I've got lots of content planned I meant to say planned it in that so so yeah there you go <coughs> sorry about that that was <coughs> tickly cough have a great Monday love you guys see you soon ciao